Hi, welcome to Clue, Christian Life Upskill. My name is Ifan Yokokwa. In this video, I want to be sharing with us very briefly on the subject, on the concept of forgiveness. Now, I want to be touching on, on the concept of forgiveness. You know, right from when man fell, God started working out forgiveness for us. Remember, when man fell in the, in the garden, Genesis chapter 3, he disobeyed God of what God asked him not to eat. You know, and from then on, God started making provisions for forgiveness. You see, but this was fully instituted in the book of Exodus chapter 20 when God gave man the Ten Commandments. Just after those commandments, if you read from 24, the Bible now started talking about sacrifice, offering of you know, animals, sheep, bull, and all that. You know, and from then on, you know, there was a kind of atonement. But you see, the challenge was that this atonement was not um, powerful enough to take away sin. You see, when there was animal sacrifice, sin sacrifice, what happened was it covered sin for just a year. So every time you offer sacrifices just for a year, you know, it covers for a year. So God knew that this is not going to be enough. So God started making a, a complete plan. So you begin to see how God started prophesying about the birth of Christ. You see, because now, you know, the, the offerings of, like Hebrew talked about in the book of Hebrew chapter 10, you know, where he said that the offerings of bulls and goats was not enough to take away sin. It wasn't enough to take away sins. So, so finally, Jesus came. And when Jesus came, Jesus lived his life completely around that assignment. Yes, Jesus came to take away sin and also to bring a new order. But his primary assignment was to solve the sin problem that God had in mind from Genesis when man fell. Remember in the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 12, you know, Paul writes, he says, As by one man's offense, sin came into this world, and death came in by sin, and death was passed to all men because all have sinned. So from the time Adam sinned, death came in. And the offering of bulls and goats was not enough to take away that sin. You know, so God, God had to send Christ to take away sin. Hallelujah. And Jesus lived his life around that assignment. You know, Jesus lived his life around that assignment to keep that purity. You know, because he was pure. Hallelujah. You know, somebody was asking me some times ago, now why did Jesus not marry? Now, Jesus couldn't have married for so many reasons. But one of the major reasons why he couldn't have married was because he had to keep that purity. Jesus was pure. His blood was pure. Hallelujah. His blood was pure. He needed to keep that purity. You know, John chapter 1, verse 29, when John saw him coming, he says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He says, if you look very well, the word is, Behold the Lamb of God. Why? Because lamb are usually those those those. Um, sheep of the first year, you know, sheep, the general word is sheep, but then there's a lamb, that is the small, the growing up, the adolescent kind of, of sheep, still growing up, but it's usually the lamb of the first year. Those lamb of the first year are those lamb that have not mixed up sexually with the female counterpart, so they have not, had, they have not started mating. So that act makes them the lamb, which speaks of innocence. So Jesus did not marry, because if he had married, he would have punctured that plan that God had. Remember when a man, of course, you know, when a man meets the woman, there's a mixture. And when there's a mixture, you know, he wouldn't have been able to take away sin. Because when a man meets the woman, they become one. So he would not have been able to be fit to take away sin if he had married. So the Bible describes him as lamb. Lamb of the first year. The lamb of the first year have not started having, you know, have not started mating with the female sheep. You know, so Jesus was that lamb because he needed to keep that thing. Glory to God. He needed to keep it. So because if he had married, he would have been corrupted. That holy nature would have been corrupted. So Jesus was pure. And I hope you know that Jesus was pure. When we talk about purity here, it means his, 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 his nature was pure. Because he didn't come because through the agency of a man. You know, everybody that came to this world came through the agency of a man meeting a woman. But Jesus did not come through that agency. Jesus came through the spoken word of God. Hallelujah. So because of that, he was pure. So 
He had to come that way and live his life that way to be able to be fit to take away sin. Glory to God. And Jesus took away sin. You know? And when he died, sin was taken away like John says. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. When he died, sin was taken away really. Glory to God. So the challenge with sin was eradicated completely. Glory to God. So Jesus came and took away sin. And this act of taking away was once and for all time. So you hear preachers say things like, you know, Jesus has taken away our sin, past, present, and future. You know, it sounds very offensive to a lot of Christians. You know, you're like, why would you say Jesus has taken away my sins, past, present, and future? You know, they don't understand what it really means. So people get offended when they hear that kind of comment. Now, I'm going to explain to you what it means because most times they don't explain some of these things and we think that they are trying to give people leeway to live in sin. No. In the Bible, especially in the New Testament, sin has two standpoints. There are two standpoints in which sin is, is presented. First, sin is presented as a noun or as a nature, which is the nature that came from Adam. The word is amartia. Then also sin is also described as an action. The action of sin, which the Greek described as amartano. So there is a nature of sin that came from Adam. When Adam fell, the sin that came in is called amartia. It's used as a noun, amartia. The nature of sin. Then there is another word for sin in the New Testament called amartano. We speak of the action of sin, like killing, like murder, like stealing, like fornication and all that. They are the action of sin. That is amartano. But there is amartia, which speaks of the sin that came from Adam. There is a nature of sin the Bible talked about that came from Adam. The nature of sin there is used as amartia, used as a noun. You know, a noun is the name of a person, animal, place, or thing the name of a person. Then there is Amartano. Amartano speaks of the action of sin. But when God wanted to take away sin, the sin that God took away was the Adamic sin, which is what the Greek uses for as Amartia. So when John said things like, Behold the Lamb of God, John chapter 1 verse 29, that taketh away the sin of the world, the word they used for sin was Amartia. Like when the angel came to Mary in, John, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and says, you know, you shall conceive and give birth to his son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. The word there for sin is amartia. The word there for sin in John chapter 1, verse 29, when John saw him was amartia, taking take it away the sin of the world. So when Jesus died, he took away our sin. So the issue of sin was solved. So, henceforth, every man that believes in Jesus, that sin, nature, is removed from his life completely. Such that he will not need to ask for forgiveness from that sin again. So, when a man believes in Jesus and receives forgiveness of sin, the avartia sin in his nature is removed forever. That is the truth. So when, they, when you hear things like God has forgiven our sin, past, present, and future, it is true. Because when that sin, nature, amartia, is taken away from the spirit of a man when he accepts Christ to his life, he will not need to ask for that forgiveness again in his life because it has been removed. Yes, subsequently, he might do something wrong you know, and commit the action of sin. Then he will go to God for pardon. What he receives is pardon. But what he receives is pardon. But for when it comes to Christ, what he receives is forgiveness, which is remission. The word is aphesis. But when he sins subsequently as a Christian, what he receives is afiemi, which the Bible describes as pardon. So when you hear things like, Jesus has taken away our sin, past, present, and future, understand what he's saying. There are two, there are two ways sin is described in the Bible. Amartia and Amartano. Amartia speaks of the Adamic sin, which make Jesus to come to this world to die for man, to take away that amartia sin. So it has been taken away. So when you believe in Jesus, that sin in your life, that sin nature is removed from your life forever. 
That is the truth. But subsequently, you can still do something wrong as a Christian. That amartya sin is not in you anymore, but you have committed an act of sin called amartano. Then you go to God and ask for pardon. So, so can we say that when Jesus, when your sins are forgiven, they are forgiven past, present, and future? According to the Bible, it is true. Based on this analogy I just gave you. Because when, when man fell in, in sin, when Adam fell in Genesis chapter 3, the sin that was introduced to the world was a sin nature called amartya. So when you hear preachers say that, understand this is what it means. Glory to God. So our sins have been taken away, past, present, and future. According to the scriptures, it is true. Now, in talking about understanding the concept of forgiveness, there are two words that are used for forgiveness, like I explained earlier, which I tried to touch a little. I'm going to explain it a bit more further. There are two words that are used to, comp- that are used to talk about s- forgiveness in the New Testament. The first is aphesis. The second is aphemi. The first is aphesis. Every time somebody comes to Christ, to maybe Jesus Christ come into my heart, I give him my heart, I believe you are the son of God, you know, I believe you died for my sin. What the person receives at that point he receives aphesis. Bible calls it forgiveness. A better word is aphesis, which is remission, which is removal. So the sin nature is removed from your life. It's called aphesis, redance, to take away. Glory to God. So when you come to Christ, what happens is you receive aphesis. Glory to God. You receive as aphesis from your sin. You see it in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 38. The Bible says, through this Christ, he preached unto us the forgiveness of sins. A lot of scripture says, the removal of sins. Hallelujah. It says, through this Christ, he preached unto us the forgiveness of sins. And all those who believe in him are justified from all things, which they could not be justified by the law of Moses. Hallelujah. And then, of course, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, Paul writes, he says, In whom we have redemption, glory to God, through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. And then Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. In Paul also writes, he says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The word there for forgiveness in all these verses I quoted is the word aphesis. Hallelujah. Which means total taking away of sins. Sin was removed from your life the day you gave your heart to Christ. And that sin was removed forever. You will not need for that sin to to be removed from your life again. It is removed once and for all on your life. You will not need forgiveness from that sin again. The Adamic sin, you will not need to ask for forgiveness from that sin again. But subsequently, as you live your life, maybe you disobeyed God in one way or the other, and then you go to God in prayer and say, Father, I've committed sin. Forgive me. What you receive at that point is also forgiveness. But the word they are used for it is the word afiemi. Afiemi speaks of pardon. Another word for it is to omit. So when you go to God, Father, forgive me. What he does is, is he omits the sin from your life. Hallelujah. The, the sin action. So it's called afiemi. So in the New Testament, in talking about forgiveness, there are two. One is aphesis. The other is afiemi. Afiemi is not for unbelievers. So the unbeliever does not need afiemi. The unbeliever, the unbeliever needs aphesis for sin to be taken away totally from his life. You understand? What makes people sinner is not that they sinned. No. What makes people sinner is that they have sin nature in their spirit. So when they come to Christ, they receive aphesis, total taking away of sin. I don't know if I've been able to explain this you know, like it is in my spirit. It's because the concept of forgiveness is something that we must understand. I lived that kind of life for a long time. I was not sure of my salvation because I didn't understand some of this truth. You know, so you find yourself always, before you pray, you must always have forgiveness, even when you sin or not, because there's sin consciousness in your spirit. But you must understand as a believer, when you come to Christ, you are forgiven. Hallelujah. Forgiven. Your sins have been taken away. So when you come to Christ, you are forgiven. Hallelujah. What about when I do something wrong? When you do something wrong, ask for forgiveness and move on. But you are forgiven. Your sins have been taken away. Glory to God. So 
the word of a seed, you can see it in the Bible. You see it in the book of in James chapter 5, verse 15. The Bible says, you know, is there anyone sick among you? Let him come for the elders of the church. Let them pray for him, and not him with the toil. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. He says, and if he had committed any sin, he shall be forgiven him. The word there for forgiving is the word, I fear me. He says, if anyone has sinned, and we are falling into one sin or the other, and he's sick. So when you pray for him, he say God will also forgive his sin, omit the sin. First John chapter one verse nine. You know, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, you are fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sins. The word there is affirm me, Hallelujah. But you see, in these two verses, James and First John. He was talking to believers because it is believers that need affirm me. The unbelievers does not need affirm me. The unbeliever needs Ephesus to take in the way of sin. And glory to God. So this is how much I will be able to explain this understanding of forgiveness in this video. You know, once in a while, as God lays in my heart, I'll be touching some of these things, you know, so that we can, you know, we can fully understand what they mean. And I know that this has blessed you. So thank you so very much for taking our time to watch this video. Please, if you have not subscribed, please, I will encourage you to subscribe to turn on the post notification and to share with your friends. And please, if you are watching from Facebook, I will encourage you also. There's a link I'm going to put when, when I share it on Facebook. Please click that link because if you take it to YouTube, when it does, click the subscribe button. The reason is so that it can help us to open out our algorithm. And when we do this, God will bless you. Thank you once again for watching this video. Until I see my next video, God bless you.